All right, politics. Uh, not my first time explaining this, so sorry if I'm a little rushed here, but, uh, well, first of all, in case you see, it's kind of not raining right now, but it was raining like five minutes ago, where, bad enough where I just couldn't record this, because my laptop would have broken from getting soaked. Uh, uh, but, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, in this politics, uh, I guess, type of video? No, it's a series. That's what I was looking for. In this politics series, I'm gonna, as best as I can, try to avoid, uh, well, over-representing one side or the other. That said, I'm a human being and I don't naturally have all the facts on every issue. Uh, oh yeah, here, instead of waving my foot in front of the camera, here's proof that it's not stock footage. There. Um, so, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, this, in this section, uh, in this series, I'm gonna attempt to, every time a video, these aren't gonna be as planned out as the other ones are, and that's saying something considering how much I rant on the other ones, or not rant, I just ramble, I guess. Um, so, because the way I'm thinking about this is that I, the only way I can actually do a politics section is if I talk about these issues on the day they occur to me, while it's still fiery hot in my uh, mind of me still thinking like, oh, I, I'm angry about this. I should do something about this since all it takes is like a couple of hours and some calm thinking before I can usually calm down about just about any issue. Uh, so I've got to sort of record these last minute. Oh, that's why there's a stick. Uh, okay. Let me shove this over a little bit. Uh, moving the camera. I'm breaking rule number one. All right. Um, yeah, so I'm still shaking it. Uh, oh, that's why. Uh oh, you get to see the leaves. Oh, ah, there we go. There. Um, uh oh, it's sideways. So this stick, huge stick, was sitting under me and the camera, so it was shaking it. Uh, that was not at all a good attempt at throwing. Uh, let's try to correct that horizontalness. Okay, uh, even though the ground is actually horizontal, so I'm compensating for whatever. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's what this is. I'm gonna, these are gonna be unplanned. I'm still gonna attempt to be un, uh, overly sympathetic to one side or the other. That said, today's issue goes over men's rights and women's rights, just because, uh, this issue, I should note, uh, hasn't personally come up for me, but it's one of the issues which I've seen uh, I, well, anyways, it's come up, uh, as the concept of this issue. Uh, and I've thought to myself, like, that's not right, but then I've been thinking about it for a while, and, well, you'll see. Um, yeah, so I should preface, men's rights and women's rights, I am a male, uh, so, biologically, uh, I don't know what all the, I know there's like 300 terms if you ask some people for sexualities. My, I took a biology or a type of biology class, and uh, I like the distinction they brought up in that class, which is biological sex is just male or female, and it's ba it's either born or changed later by different uh, hormone therapies or, uh, well, mostly hormone therapies, but then also surgery helps with that. Uh, uh, but uh, then gender is what that biology professor considered to be controversial and yeah, whatever. People have tons of terms for it. I'm not sure how many terms are real, but I'm sure it's more than two, honestly. Gay or straight, I'm not really, or cis or whatever some people call it. Uh, I'm sure it's more than just that. Uh, or maybe it's not. Maybe those are like the most broad categories, but I think it's probably more like a three-dimensional thing, so you're just somewhere within the cube of gender. But anyways, um, that's a different issue. Um, so, uh, I am biologically sexed as male, and I've experienced most of my life as straight white male kind of thing. Um, uh, I, I was, for a second I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that, straight white male. Uh, but then I was like, wait, my voice does not sound female, does it? Does it? No. No, I'm, I'm okay. No. Huh. I hope not. Well, um, well, I wonder why I hope not. Oh, no. No, this is not philosophy. This is politics. 
Um, so, uh, I've experienced my, and you've seen my hand and feet and hand, uh, so you know I'm white. Uh, or at least I'm, uh, or at least you know that I, uh, appear to be white. I had a, I had a history professor at one point who, uh, was born completely Latin. I think her family was from way, like, right on the, uh, I forgot which country she said her family was, she was born in America, but I forgot which country she said her parents migrated from, but I remember it was right on the equator in South America. So her, so her brothers and sisters and, uh, cousins and all that were really dark skinned, but she looks like just general Caucasian American. Uh, it doesn't sound like it, uh, because, of course, she was raised within a whole bunch of people so, like that, so she grew up simultaneously learning English and Spanish, and the accent stays. Um, but she, I don't know, so for all you know, I'm one of those people. I'm not. <laughs> uh, I have, I'm sure I've got a little bit of something that's not Europe in me, but not much. Um, honestly, you could probably draw my uh, family lines if you went far enough. You could probably draw it right back to Germania. Um, so, uh, straight white male. That's what it comes down to. But I'm gonna try to represent everyone. I, I'm What I'm worried about here is that I'm gonna either overcompensate and represent women, uh, or, yeah, it has to be women here, too much. Uh, or uh, I'm gonna... Under or I'm gonna be wor too worried about overcompensating, so I'm not gonna compensate enough. So this is gonna be unfair to women. But anyways, I have now stated what might possibly happen. Uh, so all I can do is my attempt. I'm not a professional politicker. Uh, oh, it's raining more. Uh, well, I'm gonna record this for as long as I can. But if there looks to be a rather large jump cut, that's probably because there was. Uh, all right, so issue at hand seven minutes in and we're getting to the issue at hand that's great i've been worse about this before honestly um if you're just seeing this politics video is the first one for me um so uh the issue at hand is i've heard it referred to as forced fatherhood uh and more or less the summary of the issue is uh of course there's a whole bunch of controversy about abortion uh, and very few people think that abortion should ever be forced uh, against the mother's wishes. But the problem is, what happens if uh, a man and a woman have sex, they agree that it's simply a casual thing, or they agree that they don't want to have kids, maybe they're a couple, um, and then the woman changes her mind and decides to have kids anyways against the male's will. Now, the legal system pretty much just says right now to the male, sorry, buddy, uh, even though, you know, that's a pretty big breach of trust. Uh, I've seen a couple of examples of guys who that's happened to, not physically, but, you know, read stories or read their accounts. Uh, and of course, you're not going to stay in a relationship with that major of a breach of trust, but you're still pretty much locked into child support for the next 18 years. And that's not right. But on the other hand, the other side of this coin is that you can't, what are you going to do? Force the woman into an abortion? Uh, especially if it's against her religion. Uh, and we're not entirely sure it's legal. We're not entirely sure we're comfortable with that as a national identity currently. Um, I know one side or the other, the really anti-abortion people think like, oh, most of the country thinks no. And the pro-abortion people think like, oh, all the human normal people think yes. Honestly, I think we're pretty much split on this issue because trying to see this from a moderate position here, but I can really easily see like where on the one hand the anti people are coming from because, uh, you know, that's a living being. Do they deserve to not exist? Uh, or on the other hand, the, uh, the woman's perspective uh, or the anti-abortion people perspective who say things like, well, you can't force the mother to carry that for, for nine months, especially if it's something like a rape situation. Um, so then that actually brings up another layer of complexity. Even if we then decide, we go fully in and we decide that both parents have to agree for a child to be born, uh, then it still brings up a certain situation such as mother is raped. Woman decides she doesn't want to have the kid. Uh, but the father comes out and says, nah, I want it. 
Uh, now, this actually brings up some situations such as rape victims uh, can sometimes be forced to give uh, visitation rights to the rapists in some states, which is actually a thing. Um, I don't, that does push me over a little bit. Yeah, I, to, I can understand having a child exist, but if you're gonna, but if it's gonna come into life through rape, that's not the child's fault. But that's certainly the father's fault. You can't, at that point, allow the father to continue being the father. They're just the sperm donor at that point. Um, so, uh, then that that this whole thing brings up this separate issue of whether or not we should uh, allow uh, there to be, uh, how do you say this, uh, whether or not we should allow men to decide here as well. To the one extent, it's the fact that men are being screwed. I saw a little thing in Sweden, uh, which is a really liberal country, but they've been really hesitant to do this, uh, but a proposed law where it basically say, uh, at 18 weeks, the father could, before 18 weeks, the father could just sign a uh, paper legally aborting himself from any child, uh, saying effectively, not, saying effectively that they're not the father, they don't have any rights over the child. But by the same token, they don't have to pay for the child, which they did not agree to uh, having. But that seems like an adequate solution, but still not perfect. And of course, Sweden is really hesitant to do this. My main problem with this whole issue is that currently the social and legal standard for this seems to be pretty much tough luck. Uh, it basically comes down to the mother's decision. Now, I don't know. I don't like to fully believe in such things where, yeah, those men's rights people who are effectively saying, women, uh, we've reversed the patriarchy. It's a matrimony matrimarchy, I think. It's matro something, anyways. Uh, it's a matriarchy at this point. Uh, women have more rights than men. Uh, I can see their argument. I don't, I don't think they're entirely right, and I think they're kind of fudging some facts, but I can see their argument, uh, and this is certainly one of those examples where it's like, this is a major thing. This is 18 years of a person's life. Average lifespan for a man is like 70. We have an average of 75, I think, but that's only because women live to like 78 or something on average, and men live to like 73. Uh, so, you know, it's the kind of thing where you, you're 20 before you can really be an adult, uh, or 21 or something like that. I know, I'm, uh, of course, you're an adult at 18, but, uh, you know, it's effective adulthood versus uh, legal adulthood. You can be drafted, but you can't drink alcohol kind of thing. Um, so, then that brings in another issue. You know, let me... It's getting too rainy. I've got to pause this. Oh, you're going to see a huge jump cut. Yeah. Alright, this is the first video I haven't been able to do in one take on my laptop, which is unfortunate. I have to do a little bit of editing. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to try and keep recording this. I've pretty much got it protected and held in my laptop. I'm trying to basically body shield my laptop right now. Um, yeah, but, so this brings up... Uh, oh, yeah, so... Adult versus, uh, you know, it's not, you're not really an adult at 18. I think it kind of starts at 20, socially at least. Uh, of course, you gain a couple more rights at 21. But really, uh, the point when you, adulthood really starts to sink in, you're not just a youth who, you're not just a teenager who suddenly gets to live on their own. You're actually an adult, even if a very young one. And that happens about 20. Um... Anyway, we're, we're, I'm going to say 20 for simplistic sake. It is kind of 20 anyways, but it, it, 20 to 22 it depends on the person and the situation, the culture, and the part of the country. But, you know, 20 for ma the sake of the math. Uh, we'll say most men live to 75. We'll stretch it a little bit. Uh, so we'll just tack 18 years on. We'll say you get uh, a woman or a woman gets pregnant, and even though you agreed not to, uh, at 20 so that way, 21, the kid is born. Uh, okay, 18 years. So, uh, well, no, we'll, we'll fudge it a little bit. We'll say uh, it happens in your 21st year. Uh, you get drunk or something, and you both do it, and then she just decides to keep it, uh, even though you agreed not to or something like that. Uh, so 21, and then we're going to, they're born when you're 22. Uh, that's 18 years. Again, I'm just doing this for the sake of the math. But still, 
it comes out to uh, effectively 20 years after that. So 40, you're 40, you're officially uh, a free man, as it were, uh, because a woman decided that she wanted to be pregnant. Uh, listen, that's, you've got, what, 35 years left on a 75 year life, you're more than half over, you're fully into your middle age. Uh, I don't know, I, well, I really, I just can't morally accept that. Uh, of, and, you know, the alternative to that is like the social, uh, more or less what it comes down to socially is the men are, ba men are basically told, okay, tough luck, you should have used a condom or gotten a vasectomy or something like that. But the, what is that telling people? What is that telling our young boys uh, is one question. I know I'm, wow, that, that is as close to politician sounding as I've sounded in a while. Um, yeah, but what is this telling our young boys? In my mind, it kind of sounds like this is telling them effectively don't trust women and avoid them if you can. Uh, now, anyone who knows anything about the differences between the biology of men and the biology of women will know that, um, shall we say, um, relations uh, between each other is less avoidable for men than it is for women. Uh, I know women have to deal with all this stuff like cat calls, which are annoying, I'm sure, but, uh, and things like that, and looks and dirty looks and all that, but you keep in mind, men are effectively biologically created to uh, reproduce, defend, and get food, and then die, effectively. Once we've reproduced enough times, we just plop out, um, which is, you know, it's unfortunate, but it's also true. Uh, Women are really built, to, like, you guys actually have a plan in there for living to your 80s. Uh, you've got, you know, you've got menopause later on, so you're not a threat to the younger, more spry women, so that you can help the general community uh, at that point, uh, which is better than men. We effectively are, from, like, 12 on, we're effectively just little reproduction machines. Uh, it sucks. But that's what men basic. If you want to really boil it down and be really aggressive about this, now I don't agree with what I just said philosophically. But uh, if you want to look at it in a pure biological, where nothing but organisms sense. I again, I don't think about. I don't think that way. I'm more. I'm a little more spiritual than that. But I, uh, whatever. I. This is politics, not philosophy. I was going to say something like, well, that's what atheism leads to. But it's not. It's not. Atheists have their own thing going on for that. But anyways. Uh, yeah. So, this is a hard decision. I think that the best thing I can say for it is that Sweden thing. Uh, the whole, before the 18 weeks, you give up your rights. Uh, and at that point, maybe going a step further, saying like a 100 degree or 100 foot uh, or maybe not 100, say like 50, just in case you just so happen to like be at the mall at the same time. So like a 50 foot uh, uh, what's it, restraining order. So you're not supposed to get within 50 feet of the kid, uh, which is fine. That just it, And you know communications online. Yeah, if it proves otherwise, then you, I don't know. Uh, if it proves otherwise, uh, then if it proves otherwise several times to the point where it can be proved that it was most certainly an intentional act that so like if it happens twice or three times then you give up those rights and you suddenly have to pay child support but you don't get the same visitations rights um yeah so i think that's the best solution that can be come to and honestly i think that solution would make everybody upset but it's better than the alternative is the best thing i can say about it uh, so, yeah, there's that. Uh, there's politics number one. I don't know what outro I'm going to use for this video. Uh, so, or, or what intro for that matter. Uh, so yeah, enjoy, actually, you know what? I'm probably just going to film this river for a minute and then plop politics over it like I did for philosophy. Yeah, that's going to work. I'm not fancy. Uh, you want fanciness, go to another channel. Um, don't though. Like, uh, if you want fanciness, ask me and I'll try my best. But, um, so, yeah, enjoy the, I don't know, enjoy the outro, goodbye.